Good evening, Honorable Abutai. We are continuing on our series of Misilad Yisharim, and we're still in the Hakdama, the preface of Misilad Yisharim, and Ot Tet. We discussed already the beginning when he laid the ground for why a book of this nature is needed. And that is because things that are pashut, things that are simple, they are the things that you need to focus on the most. Because the fact that they are simple, the fact that everyone thinks they're obvious, causes that you never think about them, you never pay attention to them, you never spend time on them. And anything that is serious and you don't spend time on it, you will never really get to the core of it and you will forget. You don't, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And the examples that we gave was whether is our, our relationship with our family, with the children. You know, there will be no one that will tell you that their children are not important. But you ask a typical person that's working hard, how many quality minutes you spend with your children every day? Oftentimes, the, the, answer, the, the answer 20 years ago, average American family was five minutes. Five minutes, and that's before internet, before smartphones, before Instagram and Facebook and all the Dvali Makedoshim that we have. Nowadays, I don't know what the number is. And whatever the number is, you know, your half your brain is on your phone or with all the things that tie a person to themselves when you are even with them. When you're sitting in this family dinner, where are you really? Where are you really? And we know, we, we always say you are where your mind is. But it's, it's real. I mean, I, I, I oftentimes give an example for this to elaborate on how important this is. Even in the halachic way, there's a Gemara in Masechet Gitin. I, I love this example because it's powerful and it's real. That when a person wants to give a get to his wife, to give a divorce document to his wife, the Torah says, You write a sefer kritu, the get, you hand it to her, and she's divorced by, thereby. The Gemara has a quandary. The Gemara says, What happens if I give it to her? But there is a string attached to it. I'm not pulling on it. I'm holding this string, I give the get to her hand. So I wrote the get, it's her name, it's her thing, her information. I handed it to the wife and she now has it in her possession. But I have a string attached. Is she divorced or is she not divorced? So even though that you went through all the motions of what the Torah says, the Mara says if the string is strong enough that you could pull it back even though that you're not planning to pull it back you haven't pulled it back says the Gemara she's not divorced why because if I could pull you out then you're not there if I could pull you out of a family dinner or out of a bet midrash or out of a tefillah with a mere text message with a little phone call then you're not there, you're not in the family, you're not around the table with your family, you're not with HaKadosh Baruch Hu in Bet Knesset. You're not. You're there physically, but you are not there. Because you are not your body. If you want to elaborate on that, the Pasuk says, in Yishaya Lavi, Pasuk says, Be'or u'basar hilbishani, u'ba'atzamot v'gidim tesochecheni. So you, you, you have covered me, you have, you have covered me with skin and flesh, and you stood me up with bone structure and sinews. So who is me? The goof is not you. The goof is a goof. You are, well, in the deeper sense, in the deeper sources of, uh, of Jewish thought, that is neshama, but in practical sense, you are where your mind is. But you are when your thoughts are, your passions are. And if you're not there, so then you're not there. And hence, 
It's important to spend time in this, said the Ramchal. And he even brought the Gemara that says, Hen Yirat Hashem Yichokhmah, that Yirat Shamayim is not only a knowledge, but is the knowledge in the world. It's the most fundamental knowledge in the world. And nothing is going to be called a knowledge if you have to spend no, no time on it. So therefore, we understand, and this is a sad realization, but a realization nevertheless, that we don't necessarily know what Yirat Shamayim means. We don't necessarily know what Avodat Hashem means. We grow up with, by osmosis, we take in certain Jewish values, we grow up with them by parents, by society, by the, sh the, the shul, the bate Knesset, or bate Sefer that we go to. And that becomes our spectrum of, of understanding of HaKadosh Baruch Hu without us putting any time in actually trying to understand what it is. And that's a sad reality. So therefore, he now is going to, is going to explain what the Torah has as a recipe for this and how we relate it to our day-to-day -day life. So says the Ramchal, by Otet in the Akhtamam, Huma she Moshe Rabbeinu alav ha-shalom elamedenu. There's a pasuk that actually, luckily for us, there's a pasuk in the Torah that says what Hashem wants from you. It's very difficult to have, especially for this generation, that the average atten attention span, span of a person in the United States as of five years ago was eight seconds. Eight seconds. A goldfish is nine seconds, right? And that's, and that's a few years ago, right? So therefore, we want it concise. We want it to be, you know, tell it to me in one, one sentence. And Hashem exactly did that. So it says the Pasuk in Devarim, in Parashat Ekev, this is. It says, Vata Yisrael ma Hashem Hashem I'm going to tell you in one sentence what Hashem wants from you. You want to know what Hashem wants? All that Hashem, all that Hashem wants from you. Ki'im. Ki'im means only but, meaning this is it. There is nothing more. Now, this sentence is going to include, of course, everything in it. But the Torah says it in a concise way. But to fear Hashem your God, to go in all of His ways, which does not mean to keep the mitzvot. You'll see why in a second. To love Him. To serve Hashem your God. To serve him with all of your heart and all of your soul. To keep his mitzvot and to keep his chukim. End of the Pasuk. Says the Ramchal, Kan Kalal Kol This one Pasuk has in it Kol Everything you need to know about Avodat Hashem is here. Everything. Because the Pasuk says, Mr. Hashem does not explain this, but to me it seems that the reason he says this is because it says Ki'im. But this is the only thing Hashem wants from you. That means, by, by definition, that everything that Hashem wants from you is in this encapsulated Pasuk. So what does that mean exactly? Behem, and he counts. This is the five things. Hayirah, ha'alicha bidrachav, fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, going in his path, loving him, shalemut alev, the perfection of a, a person's heart, the shemirat kol mitzvot, and keeping of all the mitzvot. Now let me reorganize this a little bit. We all know that if you, if, if I would ask this question, what does God want from, want from you? What would we say? Say, well, He wants us to do the mitzvot. That's what we all would say, and it's correct, right? But the Torah says it in, in a different order, in almost like an opposite order. But let's reconfigure this. You have to do the mitzvot, but what does it mean to do the mitzvot? If I do a mitzvah, for instance, let's get a little halachic over here to understand this, because really this works with, with the parameters of halacha. So there's a Gemara, now we pass it in Shukharuch, mitzvot tzichot kavana. Gemara says, 
is machloket anaim. What exactly the, the boundaries of this is? But mitzvot zrichot kavana. What does it mean? Mitzvot zrichot kavana. What does it mean? That means if you do a mitzvah and you don't have kavana, it's as though you did not perform the mitzvah. If you sit in the sukkah and you live in California, the sunny, beautiful California, and everyone is out because it's beautiful, and you have completely no intention of doing the mitzvah, you just it's a nice night night out with the family, right? It's be, before the the bugs come, whatever it is, and you're eating. Happen to eat a kazait, a kabetzav bread over there. Did you do the mitzvah de oraita of eating a kazait, kazait or kabetzav bread the first night of Sukkot in the sukkah? And the answer is no, you didn't. Rav Shlomo Zamer Orbach, the undisputed gadol ador and a posek of the previous generation, the Rosh Hashivav um, of Kol Torah, he actually writes, is the first tshuva in his tshuvot, Minchat Shlomo, Chelek Aleph, he actually has a quantity. He says, is it only that you didn't do the mitzvah of eating in the sukkah, but it's parv, you didn't do any avera, or is it considered that you did an avera of eating outside sukkah? Because once you're not mekayem the mitzvah, if you really didn't do the mitzvah at all, and mitzvot tzrichot kavana is an absolute fact and truth, then it's as if you ate outside the sukkah, which you will be accountable for eating outside sukkah, which is not allowed. You cannot eat bread outside sukkah. You can eat and rice and other things outside the sukkah, but you can't eat bread outside the sukkah. It's asur, as the Gemara says in Masechet Sukkah, Dav Chavav. And Rav Shol Orbach's maskara of the tshuva is, yes, you're accountable for having eaten outside the sukkah. You understand this? If your mind is not there when you do a mitzvah, it almost counts as nothing. So yes, doing the mitzvot is very important. But what does it mean to do the mitzvot? So Shalemut Halev, which he says, is a part of that, of doing the mitzvot. Because my heart, my kavana has to be there. I has to be intentful that I am standing to daven in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu as a mitzvah av ul ovdo bechol levavchem. Which it says in the Torah. I am hereby doing the mitzvah of Hence the Svaradim and Ali Kadosh was very specific about saying Lashem Yichud before every mitzvah. Not, right? But even that could become a robotic thing. But just to take a moment, I am doing something meaningful right now. I'm saying Shema. I'm accepting the yoke of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's kingdom over his creation on myself right now, in the morning and at night, when I start my day and when I end my day. I started with thoughts of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and supposed to carry me through, through the day. I put that feeling in front of my heart to control my desires, in front of my for, you know, front cortex of, of my brain to control my thoughts and my plannings. It's a meaningful activity. It's not putting a bunch of boxes on yourself and shuckling in front of the wall for, for five minutes three times a day. That would be not just childish, it would be exactly the opposite of what a human being is supposed to do. We're not cookie cutter things like, you know, that you spin the thing and it starts doing what it does. That's meaningless. Imagine for yourself now, especially that you have an AI age and robot age. Imagine a robot that knows all of the kavanot of the tefillah. You input in it all of the perushim and tefillah shemona isred that has ever been printed or written in the history. I know it all. And he stands to Davin Shemona Isle and you see the robot chuckling. What do you think? Exactly. All of you will start smiling and laughing at it. Why? Because it's meaningless. The knowledge is Chamornos Esfarim. It's like a donkey loaded by, by Sfarim. That's what it is. Nowadays you don't have to load it on top. You, 
input it, you, you upload. But that's what it is. It's not a human being with emotions. What make us who we are is our emotions, is our thought process, which n nobody could duplicate. No robot could do that. And that's what makes it a mitzvah. A robot that would wrap around tefillin, or for that matter, a person that's mechuyav, the robot is not obligated. A person does it, but the mind is completely flying all over the place. The mitzvah is meaningless. And these are sharp words, but it's true. It's true, you sit in the sukkah, you have no mind. You have done an avera instead of a mitzvah. Imagine that. That's Shalemut Alev. But it's Ava also. That means it's not just enough that you have, okay, here I am doing Shema, I'm accepting the yoke of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay, I'm, here I am doing Tefillah, beautiful, amazing. Check, 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 you're doing the mitzvot. But there's a part of the mitzvah that's not just doing and, and the mental exercise, but it is part that we relate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There are two dinim, Tzvei dinim, there are two, two alachot, two inyanim in doing the mitzvot. One is the technicalities that we spoke about, and technicalities does not mean physically going through the motions, as we said. It means your mind and body are in sync in doing the mitzvot. But that's one element. The other element is, this is a tool through which I connect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If you come home on Mother's Day or on your anniversary and you remember it, which is not so pashut, right? You remember the anniversary and you were mindful enough to go buy a $2,000 gift. Amazing. And you wrote the notes. And you bring it in, say, my mother just called me and said, no, don't, don't forget uh, to give the anniversary gift. And you put it there. Or my rabbi said it, and you put it there. You did everything right. But what does that, how much does that mean to your wife? Zero. Zero. Or almost zero. You know why? Because there's no relationship. Where is the love? Where is the passion? When you love something, you're passionate about it and you could tell because it overflows from a person when you're passionate. You see the twinkle in the eye, you see the smile, you see the glow. And just like any other relationship, our relationship with Hashem is supposed to be like that. And that's the love, the excitement of Ava. It's not that I'm just doing the mitzvot. And I even have Kavanah, Hazak Baruch. But I am dying to do this. I love it. And I'm so happy when I get to do it. It's an opportunity. A 613 opportunities. It's not 613 commandments or burdens or whatever else it is that for people. For some people, it's commandments, which is beautiful. Halvai, all the Jews should be like that. For some people, it's a burden. But in truth, it's 613 opportunities to get close with Hashem. You know, when you want to impress someone, because you love them so much, you're looking for opportunities. And the harder it is, the more you, you enjoy it. Because I could prove my love, my love even in the, this circumstance, even under this difficult situation. The harder it becomes, the more excited you become. Oh. And a person could become a general out of a, a, a simple soldier showing their commitment and love in one, one difficult instance. And that's exactly what it is. When a person has that love, the care, that's Ava. So it's Shemirat Kola Mitzvot Gewaldik. Amazing. Keeping up, but you need Shalemut Alev, you need the heart to be there. And you need Ava, you need excitement to be there. But that's not enough. Because that's doing the mitzvot. But then you have to also be lalechet bechol darachav. You have to emulate Hashem. Which is not doing the mitzvot. But it means becoming godlike. As we're going to discuss it in just a moment. As the Gemara says, this is Masech Shabbat, we're going to discuss it. But to emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu's ways of being a compassionate person, being in special 
human being, a God-like human being. And then that recognition gives to a person a certain on respect. It really works together when you have an understanding and a mindfulness. It's okay, it's a buzzword, but it's, it's no other way of, way of saying it. The, the mindfulness of who am I dealing with? Can you imagine, we did this exercise, exercise I used to do several times every, every, every day when I was a teenager. So just imagine to yourself that you're standing and you zoom out of where you are. You zoom out and you see yourself as a little tiny dot of nothing. Even when you're just in the neighborhood. Now you go to the city and you go to, you know, the, the, the larger region, you go to the county, you go to the, to the, to the state. You're enough, we are a nothing. And then compared to the earth, and that's just the surface. You have depth in it, it's multidimensional. And then you have the space and you have the galaxies. And it's just unreal how big this is. Like Milky Way in front of other galaxies, even one of them is considered a little dot. A little dot. Go see the pictures of it. And it'll, it'll, it'll send shivers down your spine to see how massive the universe is. And yet, Hashem wants to have a relationship with us, as we're going to say. It says in the Torah, I want to have a relationship with you. I want it. Now you're coming to deal with that creator who has put all of this together and he wants it. Can you imagine how exciting that is? Can you imagine how amazing? So now let's read it. This is how he breaks it down in two short lines. But you see how, how loaded this is, but now he's going to explain it a little bit more himself. And then of course the whole book is about this. Says the Rabchal. Hayira, he's going to explain the five items that he just said. Hayira, hiirata romemut. We're not talking about hiirata onish. As we mentioned before, Rambam writes, hiirata onish, being fearful of punishment, as beneficial as it may be, is a very, very undeveloped hiira. Rambam says this is fit for um, young people, kids, and people of damaged intellect, immaturity. Because a real mature yira is not that he's going to hit me, he's going to punish me, but it is that I realize the awesomeness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And I'm coming to, to handle with him. I'm coming in a relationship with him. How careful you have to be, you'll be afraid not to mess it up. You see someone that's seriously dating or they're engaged. Every move is calculated. Everything is because you're afraid. You don't want to mess up. You don't want to mess up the relationship. It means so much to you. And now imagine if the person that you've gotten to, to know is, you know, is the president, is the Gadol Ador, is the greatest thing you could imagine. The greater the other party becomes, the more you're fearful of not messing up. Because you adore and you appreciate the relationship. Hence you have all respect in all of your dealings throughout Baruch Hu, will be throughout the day. But that's why it's a good ex exercise to do this like 10x zoom out and imagine yourself as the bird's eye view would see you. Zakharish Baruch Hu is there and I am handling with him. I am connecting with him, talking to him and he talks to me through his Torah, and that's something very special. That a person should be in awe and respect of Hashem, just like he would be in front of a great king. And he will be almost embarrassed from the greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, like, who am I to stand in front of Hashem? Who am I? Like, as great as we may think we are, but when you realize in comparison with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, right? We are a nothing. 
and that causes a certain sense of busha, sense of positive shame when you come to deal with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's not a shame that takes away from a person's ability to do things. There's, there's negative shame as well. We're not talking about a person that's not um, confident or we're not talking about the person that, that is um, you know, embarrassed. I mean, not talking about a, ca a, per a case that a person has to be embarrassed because he did something wrong. No, we're just talking about the simple busha that I, I realize. What am I dealing with? And I'm embarrassed even to stand in front of Hashem. But wow, I have the opportunity to do so. It's an unreal thing that Kashbrok has actually chose a people to deal with directly. Directly, the pasuk says, "Bechol makom asher askir et shemi avo elecha uvrachticha." Any time, any place, you call out to me, you call my name, which is learning Torah, really, because this Torah is Shemotav shel Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Avo elecha, I will come to you, and I'll bless you. I'll come to you. Can you imagine that? That sends a certain sense of busha to a person, a positive shame. Kol shken lefanav and goes without saying when you're speaking to him in tefillah or be Torah or where you're learning Torah, which is the time that he's speaking to you. Like we communicate when we daven, we're speaking to him. When we learn, what is, what's happening when you learn? Aside from the knowledge, amassing the knowledge of mitzvot, but he's speaking to, to you. Like when you send a letter to somebody, he's speaking to them in writing. This, the Torah is the Agash Barkle's letter to us. You open it. Imagine to yourself, if Albert Einstein would send you a letter. Right? Niels Bohr would send you a letter. All these great minds. Chacham Obadiah would send you a letter. How would you learn it? You'd be shaking and, and every word would mean so much. What did he mean in here? Because you know it's a great mind talking to you. Every word matters. They chose the, the words carefully because you understand the capacity of the mind that wrote this. You don't take it seriously. If you don't understand the part of it, you won't say, eh. You say, well, I don't understand this. You go show it to people, what does this mean? What is he trying to tell me? Because you realize that he's speaking with you. He wrote you a letter. And you realize the capacity of the sender. Now, HaKash Baruch Hu says, Bechol Yom, he says, I'm giving the Torah Hayom. Hayom. Giving it to you Hayom. Even after 40 years in the Midbar, it says, Hayom! Today you be... Why? Because Hashem's relationship with us is He's giving the Torah every day to us. He's speaking. He's not bound by time. It's not that 3,000 some odd years ago He gave the Torah to a nation and now we're bound by the, 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 the same mitzvot because we are part of that nation. That's not the pshat. That's not the insight. But rather He's giving it to us. Us to, today in 2023 He's giving it to us and says, I want you to open it and read it. It's my words to you, to every single Jew. And it says it in the Torah again. Again, see, we, we discount the importance of the words of the Torah. The Torah itself says, no, I'm not talking to the people who are here. The people who are here today with us. And people were not here today with us. I am giving these words to every single Jew that has ever lived. So that Torah is a, a letter from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to me, to you, to you, to you. How do you feel about that? He's speaking with you when you're learning Torah. The Maras is at the end of Masechet Sota. Until the time of Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Rabbi Yudah Rasi, people will, will, will learn standing up. No, you will learn sitting. The Torah was given. It's a certain respect of, of Torah. It's the word of Hashem is being, being taught. I'm, I'm talking, I'm reading the words He's speaking to me. So when I stand in tefillah, I'm standing to pray to Him. I'm speaking to Him. When I learn Torah, He's speaking to me. It's a relationship. 
It's a relationship of love. Even if you're learning about difficult mitzvot, things that are challenging, but it's his word, I'm connecting with him. It's a relationship that's both ways. Now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu cannot speak openly or with open miracles in every generation because that would put us um, in a situation that would defeat the purpose of the world, which is free will. And this is the Ramban, the Nachmanides writes this at the end of Parashat Bo. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu one time revealed himself in a way that's beyond reasonable doubt for sure, but really for a thinking person is beyond a shadow of a doubt. He revealed himself. He cannot make this stuff up. Everybody experienced it themselves. Everybody experienced the relationship themselves. It wasn't something that it was a hearsay. Like if you say, well, what religions, you know, I, I like reading bumper stickers with my kids. It's a, it's a platform of discussion with the kids in the car. And they all know one, one bumper sticker that I have no patience for is the coexist. Right? I have no patience. It's, it, it's, it, it's an oxymoron by its very core nature. Because the, the things you put there, they not each one of them is mutually exclusive. So if someone would tell you, so how do you know the Judaism is, is correct from the religion? I was like, look, if there's any religion, you have to think about that. It's not, you can't, you can't just swallow things that you're fed. But if there is any religion, then we have to talk about it. The only one that has even a chance is Judaism because you can't tell me well believe me that he told me to tell you that he said that I should tell you that you should listen to me I mean how absurd is that and every single one of them starts like that by us he spoke to the nation to the multitudes of millions and everyone heard him. We heard directly. According to Nachmanides, this was a nevoah of panim el panim, the madrega of the nevoah of Moshe Rabbeinu we got for those moments. So everyone felt it, everyone knew it. There's no doubt. There's no doubt in, in our emunah to Hashem. Akash Baruch did that as a relationship. I said, okay, from now on, I can't do this every day. But now you have a point of reference, and I want a relationship with you. That means you speak to me, and I speak to you with this. And that became, oh, well, we had Nevi'im, which was more direct when we, built, when we deserved it. We had the Betta Bektash, we had Nevi'im, we had still had open miracles of some, some, some sense, the ten open miracles in Betta Bektash on a daily basis. The Mara counts in Yuma. But nevertheless, it's not open like opening the sea and Mamad Ar Sinai. Not those levels of revelation. But Akash Baruch relates to us. And he wants that relationship in a real way. And real way means I recognize that I'm reading this, Hashem is speaking to me. I realize I stand in Tefillah, I'm speaking with him. And it's real as as real as, as you could get. As real as you could get. And we have stories in Tanakh for it, to reinforce, but at the end of the day, if you don't think about it, it's not reinforced. You have the stories of, of Humash, of course, Moshe Rabbeinu Davins, and Hashem listens to him. Hashem wanted to do A, and Akash Baruch Hu changed his plans because of the tefillah of Moshe Rabbeinu, because he relates to us, and the tefillah is real. It's like you pleading with somebody that's listening to that. And things happen from that because there is a relationship. And the more you believe in that relationship, the more you understand the relation, the more mature of a relationship there is, and the more it's effective. And that's, of course, is brought out in such a fantastic way in the Gemara in Masachat Brachot Afyud on page 10. The Gemara says, Chizkiyahu HaMelech, who was perhaps the most righteous king after David HaMelech, and it's not time for the story of, of how exactly it happened. He, he turned the tie on the entire 
Klal Yisrael. He, he inherited a nation of of the Avodah Zarah, and he turned them into Tamid Hachamim. But Kumidan Vat Bersheva, they checked from one end of Eretz Israel to the other end. Everybody knew the most complex parts of the Torah, even children. But he did something wrong, and Hashem was upset with him, and he sends a Navi to him. This guy was sick, deadly ill, deadly ill. Hashem sends a Navi to him. Ishaya Navi, nonetheless, and he says, "Savel bet savet betecha." Says, "Write your will." You're going to die from this. You're not going to make it. Not me, he's telling So he tells him, again, Pratib, the details of this, I don't want to get into it. Conceptually, I want to take one point out of it. He tells him, Ben Amos, Ben Amos, Ben Amos, finish your nevoa, whatever you're supposed to tell me, and then go out. Go. I'm not listening to you. Because I have a tradition from David Amelach, from my great grandfather. Even if you have a sword laid on your neck, you don't stop from the relationship you have with Akadosh Baruch. I'm going to daven. And it says, He turned to the wall and started intensified prayer. And we all know what happened. Because the has changed, he got, he got 15 extra years. He got married, he had children. You have a Gezera, and then you have Tefillah. It's real. It's not that, ah, uh, we're supposed to stand and, and, you know, we are plagued. Because we have a set text, which has to be this way. But the downside of it is, it becomes like, okay, daven up, we, we're doing it. They get, we're sitting, davening, the same text again. Uh, here we go. Yalla. We fail to realize this is an opportunity standing. He's speaking to the one that created all of those galaxies that we just spoke about. And all of those in front of him is like a speck of da dust. And he said, call me and I will answer you. Do you understand? And when you learn Torah, it's the same thing. When you learn Torah, it's all in respect. I'm reading the words Hashem is speaking to me now. Ha'alicha bidrachav, going in his ways. What does that mean? We already said it doesn't mean keeping the mitzvot. That already he said. So ha'alicha bidrachav means kol inyan yosher ha'midot v'tikunam. Fixing your midot. Fixing the character traits that we have and becoming a godly character, a godly human being. And what does that mean? The Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, Kuflam Bet Gimel, the Gemara there says, Mahu rachum afata rachum. Just like Hashem is compassionate, you shall be compassionate. Mahu chanun afata chanun. You should be just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu is. And the most amazing way of delving in this and understanding it is to study the, the Sefer of Tomer Devorah, of Ramak, of Moshe Cordovero, who was the leading Mekubal in Sfat in Eretz Israel. In the time of Ariya Kadosh, he was much older, of course. He passed away shortly after Ariya Kadosh came from Egypt back to Eretz Israel. He has written dozens of Sfarim, tremendous personality. He wrote a very thin Sefer called Tomer Devora. Very simple to understand, actually. It's not very Kabbalistic. And it's readily available. Everyone should read it. Especially when it comes to to the upcoming Chodashim of, of Chodesh Elul and Rosh Hashanah. Because we've got to be saying, Vayavor Hashem, the Midot of Hashem. So many times we call upon this. And we call upon it because Hashem says, this is guaranteed not to come back empty-handed. The Mara says in Masechet um, Rosh Hashanah, Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, call any time that my children will do this seder, I will forgive them. And that's why Avor Hashem al Parav, but you have to pay attention. It says Yasu. It doesn't say Yomru, it doesn't say they say it, but they do it. And that's emulating Hashem. So you have to understand those 13 things. What, are, what, 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 
they are, what they mean, and what the ramification is in our lives. So Tomer Devorah goes through one by one. What does he mean? And it's tremendous to see. Hakadosh Baruch Hu gives his rachum, chanun, his erech apayim. He is patient. He's compassionate. He goes way above and beyond the letter of the law. Imagine when you sin, whose energy you're using to sin. At the time that you're going against him, he's giving you the energy to do that which is against what he said. Yeah, how, how much humility and patience you need for that. And you're supposed to emulate that with people. That's difficult. It's not easy, but it's godly. To be patient, to be compassionate, to be giving, to be truthful. These are all things that are not necessarily any part of any specific mitzvah, right? It's the, don't say midvar sheker tirchak. Amazing. The Torah says, run away from anything that's not emit. It's not true. Very nice, beautiful. But imagine to yourself a story of Rab Safra. The Gemara says Rab Safra was a Hasid, right? And this is one story that the Gemara relates about him. Of when you want to talk about truthfulness, talk about this story. He is saying Shema, and he was a business owner of some sort. So someone comes to buy an item from him, he picks it up, he says, Chacham, um, could do $50 for this. And he's not answering because he's saying Shema. Right? Not supposed to notion anything, motion anything. Like, he's just sitting there. And the guy thinks that, well, he, that was too low, it was low balling, so he says, okay, $100. Still quiet. Okay, 200. It goes up and up and up. He goes. And he finishes his Shema. He says, sorry, I was saying Shema. So he takes out the, I don't know, $500 that he wanted to give him. He says, no, $50 is enough, because when you said $50, I decided in my mind, I'm giving it to you for 50. That's dover emet bilvavo. Speaking truth in your heart even, to be an essence of truth. You know, what, you know how difficult this is? But that's levels, higher levels of emulating Hashem to be a truthful person, to be a compassionate person. That's the halachta bidrachav, the Gemara says. So when it says, the, when, the, when the Pasuk says, Kim Hashem lalechet bechol drachav, it means, the purpose is you want to connect to Hashem. The way you connect with somebody is to, the more, the closer you are to them, the more you are like them and the closer the relationship is. Now, the Ramchal himself, not in this Sefer, but in that, that Tibunot and in Der Hashem, in a sum, summarized and encapsulated way, he says HaKadosh Baruch also has done the same thing. He has given us the the control panel of the entire universe. And when we say, Betzelem Elohim Asayet Adam, the Hashem has created us in His image. What does it mean? Hashem has no image. It says, Lor Item Kol Timuna. You didn't see any image. Hashem has no image. So what does it mean? We are created in the image. Betzelem, it says form, form of Hashem. What does it mean? So says Rab Chaim Valajner, the legendary disciple of the, the Vilna Gaon, he writes in the beginning of Nefesh Chaim, what it means is, just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a creator, that affects things, creates things, we are creators as well. But he doesn't explain it quite as, 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 as elaborately as the Ramchal does. Ramchal explains it the way, um, I'll, I'll try to say in a few short sentences. It says the Ramchal, the creation of the world is not something that happened once upon a time, one, once, and that's it. But rather, it, it's renewed every moment. It's renewed constantly. But here is the catch. When Hashem renews the creation, He doesn't initiate it. But rather, there is a shefa, there's a system in which this is directed. There is an, a spiritual force, an energy that regenerates the creation. That Shefa, as a Davar Skuli, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, tied it 
to the mitzvot, especially he says the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, but it's tied into the mitzvot. So when we do the mitzvot, we are part, literally partnering with Hashem in the creation of the world. Now, I'll give you a, a simple example, which is in, 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 inaccurate in uh, what we need for, for our relationship. But it does the justice somewhat for just bringing this a level lower to, to a simple understanding. If I create a machine that makes a vessel, makes X, Y, and Z, I created the machine. Now, I left. And you come and you operate the machine, you push the button, and then the material is already there, you push the button, it starts making it, it starts making these vessels. Who made them? Who made them? You see where this is going? HaKadosh Baruch Hu has created the system, but he has given, you could take it, but he has given the control of the universe to the mitzvah. Why? Because the closer we are, to owning the good that we have, the closer we are to His essence. So it's not just like that we are supposed to be godly, but it, it, this godliness is because we are sitting in the driver's seat and Hashem wants that. Hashem wants us to be partners with Him in the closest level possible. Now we can't get closer than that because at the end of the day we are creatures, He's the Creator. So we have zero connection in our essence with the essence of Hashem. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But He has chosen to relate to us and the closest we could get to it is to become like Him in that way. In other words, ownership, if I were going to give one short more example and then we just go on because I don't want to spend too much time. But if I give you a gift, is the gift yours? Yeah, it's yours because I gift it to you. Now it's ownership belongs to you. But it's, it's for this relationship to ownership that it, there is because you didn't work for it. You just, it just fell on your lap. Whereas if you work hard and you acquire something that's also yours, but much more related to you because you worked for it. Now your hand is yours because it's part of you. That's the ultimate ownership we, we would call it. It's my hand. Part of me. Now, you can't necessarily have that because we're not part of Hashem's essence. But when you work for something and it's you're actually co-creating with Him in, 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 in the, the creation of the world, you're partnering with Him in that way, that's the, the utmost that a human being could be in closeness with Hashem. So when, in a mature way, when Hashem is saying, Halachta bidrachav, emulate Hashem, it's not just you do it. We are doing it together. I am also giving the wheel and you're sitting in the driver's seat. And I want you to, to be, the more godly you are, the more closer you are to that thing. So even though that these are difficult things, the examples we give, the dover emet bilvavo, and being patient and that, but all those things are what make a person godly. And again, these are just synapses of what we're going to see inside the Sefer. But we have to explain why these things are so important that need a Sefer to explain it. And to steps to build it up. It just not, it's not going to happen by itself. One day say, wow, this is amazing ideas. I'm going to do them. You have to have step by step working towards that greatness and that um, perfection of a human character, of being a, of a godly human being. So says the Ramchal, The general rule of thumb with this one is that you do everything that you do based on Yosher, which means justice, and Musar, which is higher than justice. Musar is beyond the letter of the law, above the letter of the law. And that's also a part that the Gemara says, well, Gemara says that's an obligation for a Jew to do beyond the letter of the law because because you were obligated to emulate the Kodesh Now some parts of this is not obligation. Some of it, even in a halachic way, the Gemara Darshins, that Lifrim Mishirat Adin also is considered something expected from a person to do. 
כל שהיא תפארת לא עושה ותפארת לא מן האדם, זה משתיים פרקי אבות, זה בגינינג אבות סקנד פרק סז, a person should choose איזו דרך ישרה שיבור לו האדם, what's the straight path in life that you should choose, anything that's תפארת לא עושה ותפארת לא מן האדם, what does that mean? it's a big מחלוקת מפרשים, the רמח"ל explains it, דהיינו, כל ההולך אל תכלית ההטבה האמיתית, anything that ends with the absolute הטבה, the true goodness, the high new, which means that the outcome, the result of it is strengthening the Torah in its totality, which doesn't mean just keeping up the mitzvot, but Torah in its totality. People learning Torah, connecting with Torah, and so on. And the love of the countries, which means the Ben Adam Lechavero. Ben Adam Lechavero connecting in a loving way with with each other, right? Which means, again, trust is the, 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 the focal point of, of uh, relationships. You know, you, you live in a, in a world that everyone is out for themselves. There's no real love. You can smile at each other because the protocol, but there's no relationship. You know that you, you turn your back and you'll be stabbed immediately. That's not Avata Medinot. That's not the society the Torah commands on. The Torah commands, if you see something of someone going wrong, Last night I was driving and there's this neighbor in the neighborhood, a street away, that has been for, for, for a while. They're uh, um, sprinklers. One of them is broken, it has a Niagara Falls, you know, and the rest of it is all drying up. And every time I pass by, is it's late at night, it's past midnight, usually ends it off. So I can't tell them, I don't have their information and the more they, I'm not there. So last night I was driving my son home earlier on, I was passing by, and I reversed the car because I noticed the, the light was on for the first time after months. I drove back, and I parked to go knock, got off the car, I said to my son, wait for the car. And he was in a rush actually, but he says, knock on the door, I want to tell you, your thing is, is broken. I care about you. Because your money, but it's my money too. But not my money, but it is. Because we are arivim zelaze. Because we are in, 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 in format, we are one bigger body with small details. But that's avata medinot. And I've been adam lechavero of loving somebody, caring about other people. And being bound to them in a real way. Everyone is thankful, but that's not the point. Like, even if they don't thank you, they'll close the door and they'll say, oh my gosh, this world still has a hope. We live in a crazy world. What used to be called the Judeo-Christian values are completely melting away. Of caring for your neighbors, of loving, of Rabbi Akiva saying that that's the Ikar of the Torah. The Gemara in Shabbat, Daf Lamed Aleph, the Gemara says, this Ger Tzedek came, the potential Ger Tzedek came to, Rabbi, to, to, to Shammai, to Hillel, and he wanted to learn the Torah on one foot. And Hillel tells him, My desale alach lechavrach al Tavid. What you hate being done to you, don't do to other people. And that's the entirety of the Torah. And the rest of it is perush of this, go figure out. Now, this is a very difficult Gemara to understand. But Rabbi Akiva says the same thing. I'm a Rabbi Akiva, this is the Machlok Tanaim. What's the, the main element of the Torah? What's the main mitzvah if you, you know, encapsulate the whole Torah in one thing? Says Rabbi Akiva, Ve'ahavta al-ra'acha kamocha ze klal gadol batorah. Says, Ahavata medinot. Anything that the purpose of it ends to that. But again, that's the end result. Now, what causes that is this, of, of going in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's way. And so on and so forth. And if you don't work on it, it's not going to automatically happen. You won't have a society of people like that. So we are still in the, in the middle of this, but we're out of time uh, with a few minutes. Hashem, we'll continue this in...
the future shooting. Chazaku Baruch.